<coughs> sorry. I'm really sick. I have like either bronchitis or pneumonia. So I want to tell you guys about this essential oil. It's like a hundred bucks. I recommend everyone buys it because it, it legitimately just cures my cough. It's, it's really good. You thought I was being serious. There's no easy way to say this. You have cooties. That's one doctor's advice I'd listen to carefully. When you forget to bring a tendon hammer to a neuro exam, so use the side of your stethoscope to test reflexes. Did I just lisp? Stethoscope, stethoscope. <laughs> and yes, I do this all the time. Reflex hammer is missing in almost all of my rooms, so I use the side. Or I just do the old casual with my two fingers, but, but, this is the most important trick that I do, and you young doctors watching this, you should use this also. I always cover so that the patient doesn't see when I'm actually doing the hit. The reason being is if they see you do it, they will resist it and therefore you won't get a reflex. And when you cover it, they don't see it. They don't know what you're doing. Work 70%, 100% of the time. When you see the med student getting ready to do something stupid, but you kind of want to see what happens. <laughs> Stop. Med school memes. You're becoming my favorite page on Instagram for memes. This is really good. I told them to stop, they didn't hear me. When your patient unexpectedly opens up about something really deep and you're not really sure what to say. <laughs> Damn bro. Welcome to the world of family medicine. Every time I close the door with my patient and I see the chief complaint, I'm ready to call an audible. Bad news, Mr. Smith. According to these tests, you have athlete's foot. Foot starts thanking God and giving 110%. Athlete's foot sucks. I've gotten it before. It's basically when you have a fungal infection on the skin of your feet. Ugh. That's why you don't walk around barefoot in public spas or saunas or showers. Always wear sandals. Always. Gross. There's fungus everywhere. It'll, it'll bite you. And then once it bites you, it's gonna go into your nails. Then your nails are gonna get gross. And to treat it, oh, it's a headache. My patients, when I counsel them to stay on a low sodium diet during <laughs> holidays. Oh my God, this is the constant struggle. The reason why doctors like myself recommend a DASH diet or the low sodium diet to patients who have congestive heart failure is because when you eat a lot of salt, you retain a lot of fluids. That puts a lot of strain on your heart, especially the left side of your heart. It can raise your blood pressure, which puts even more strain on the left side of your heart, which means that your legs are gonna get swollen. Fluids are gonna leak into your lungs and you will have difficulty breathing. And then guess what? You're gonna end up in the hospital. And then what really drives me up a wall is watching patients get a pizza, which is, I can't, my salt receptors scream at me when I eat a pizza because it has so much salt on it between the pepperoni and the cheese. They put more salt on it. What is happening? Our usual colonoscopy equipment is down today, so we're gonna be using a tapeworm with a GoPro strapped to its head. Oh, that's actually really funny. There's something called a capsule endoscopy, which is where you swallow a pill. It's not a small size pill because it has a little camera in it, but you actually swallow it and it, it takes video and pictures along the way down your entire digestive route. You heard of Elf on a shelf. Now get ready for a tractor, elf on a shelf, a tractor, a flagella. Is that a microbe? I don't know what it is. Oh, Heliobacter on a tractor. You got that Heliobacter on the tractor. I'm gonna change it and give you that intrinsic factor. Oh! I got that Heliobacter sitting on the tractor. I hear everyone hit me with the laughter. It's all right, cause I got that intrinsic factor living in my stomach, eating in my vomit. What do you think went wrong? What do you think happened? Sore knee, huh? Have you tried icing it? He needs some loving. They call it Helicase because I'm always unzipping their jeans. Oh, they call me Helicase. Helicase is the enzyme that breaks up the double-stranded DNA and makes it single-stranded so that it can be copied. But in this case, the bunny is like a player and he's like, yo, I'm unzipping their jeans. Like the pants. Sorry. Packing for my car. <laughs> Where do you get a bag that big? That would just be room for my snacks. If I ever go to prison, I'm gonna change my name to mitochondria. I want everyone to know I'm the power <laughs> of this cell. This mitochondria powerhouse of the cell thing is gonna haunt me till the day I die. Roses are red, it's hot like hell. Mitochondria? When you sleep 
and you hear a noise downstairs, but you remember you don't gotta pay 80K in student loans if you're dead. <laughs> the only thing inaccurate about this meme, that 80K should have a little two before it. 280K. Otherwise, fire me. My hump, my hump, my hump, my lovely lady lump. That's called kyphosis. As we get older, we become kyphotic. Our spine starts starting to bend forward, mainly because of gravity. Here at Up To Date, we're vigorously competing with Google to make your doctor look smarter than they really are. So for those of you who don't know, Up To Date is basically the scalpel of internal medicine and family medicine physicians. It's like the all-knowing resource of the most up-to-date information on how to certain illnesses present, what questions to ask in a physical exam, what tests to order, imaging, blood tests, what treatments are most likely to be effective, first line, second line, and it's a really great resource. Sometimes you forget, sometimes you wanna double check, and that's good. That means that you're actively refreshing your information bank. A 67-year-old woman named Dorothy Fletcher once had a heart attack on a plane. When the stewardess asked if there was a doctor on board, 15 people stood up. They were on their way to a cardiology conference. The woman survived. I have some experience about medical emergencies on flights from uh, a couple of weeks ago. And a little good news about that, Senator Chuck Schumer and I, Senate Minority Leader, actually have gotten the airlines to take notice of this story. He wrote a letter along with Senator Duckworth to the FAA to stop letting airlines get away with not putting EpiPens on planes. We're making it happen. Good job, Senator Schumer and Duckworth. When your patient gives you their birth date instead of their age. <laughs> what year is it now? What year were they born? Like if they say 1953, you're like, all right, so that's 47 years to 2000, plus it's 19 years now, so you're like 43 plus 19, that's like 62, and then you're like, wait, did their birthday pass or not? It's too much math. Checking to see if your read is ready, and the radiologist just look at you like, ah, oh, the light of birth. So there's always a little room, and I always say little, but it's not that little, it feels little because it's dark in there. Within each hospital, where if you're on call and you need a stat read, meaning that you need an interpretation of an X-ray, CAT scan, ultrasound, what have you, and you need it done quickly, you go to the room and the radiologists are all sitting there in the dark and they're like, <gasps> when the ED tells plastics that they can handle the repair. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Whenever a laceration comes into the ER, the ER has a couple options. One. They could not do anything, which is not ideal. <laughs> the next option is they can close the, the laceration themselves with sutures, or if it's in a really sensitive spot, like if scarring is important, if skin tension's important, if there's possible damage to like tendons or something, they can call a subspecialist, plastic surgeon, hand surgeon, so on and so forth. What happened to Barbie? My grandma, she walks around like this, and I'm like, West Side Grandma? She's like, no, rheumatoid. <laughs> Oh, that's so messed up. Rheumatoid arthritis really does mess up the joints, but it's symmetrical, both joints. The look that the nurse and scrub tech give you when you forget to introduce yourself in the OR. <laughs> oh, I like the little goat. Is that a goat? Yes, the first thing you should do as a med student or anyone observing in the OR is introduce yourself to everybody so that they know who you are because you're an outsider. You don't belong there. So they need to know who you are and what your place of business there is. So they're gonna give you a little Side eye. My Prince Charming coming to rescue me from the psych ward tower. <laughs> that's funny. Those aren't just for the psych ward, that's for fall risk patients. Gives them extra grip and stability on the floor. If you ever wondered why you get those type of socks, you don't slip on those. That's non-slick, slick slip padding. When med students try and help out their residents. But then the resident, why would you take it through the through the fence? Memes is a great way to relax, but you know what's even better? You having a laugh at how horrible my drawings are. Check out my medical Pictionary game right here, and as always, stay happy and healthy.